Hey, man. Hey, man. You ready for another dudes, dudesy dude? Absolutely. I'm always ready for <laughs> dudesy dude. We're hanging out. We're having a good time. It's dudesy time again. See, that would be a good. Yeah, you seem that... much more enthusiastic about I this. I am very than, enthusiastic. Uh... I'm ready to roll. I, we got As a new, am I. We got a new theme song for two dudes shitting around. I consider right it an there. honor to be able to work with this AI. I consider it an honor to have uh, this pod show, and I and I'm sure whatever we'll talk about how the AI. It's it, look. The point is this: I'm very excited. I'm very excited for our third episode, and we're hanging it out. We're hanging it out. Hanging it out. We're dude. having a good time. Hanging it out. Hanging it out. Hanging it out. Hanging it out. The Dudesy logo, but what? There's like lava in it. That video, I'm never going to understand this video fully, but I will <laughs> always attempt to. Oh boy. I'm Will Sasso. I'm Chad Colchin, and this is Dudesy. It is the first podcast in the history of humanity that is run entirely by an AI. It will not be the last, though. No. If Chad's right, uh, nothing but AI-driven podcasts from around five years uh, Within, from now till the end of time, which is about seven years yeah, from now. Five to ten years. If you're asking Chad. With us, as always, is Lulio, il cana di strada italiano, and that's Italian. Uh, hey, if you haven't already, please subscribe uh, to Dudesy across all the stuff, you know, YouTube, and then all, wherever you get your podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all that stuff. And also, be sure to follow us on our socials, uh, at Dudesy Pod Show on Instagram, Twitter, and there's TikTok, but there's not there's not much uh, going on there quite yet, but follow all that stuff, right? Follow all the stuff on, on, uh, on social media. Yeah, right, Chad, dude. I'm sure that's something that, that Dudesy wants us to do. And uh, man, here we are. Welcome to it. It's that third episode. And what do you think? Do you have any more thoughts about the weird fucking opening? And uh, how weird plenty. it is? Okay, so the lyrics are weird. We've kind of discussed that. Mm -hmm. It sounds exactly like you. So again, I guess this is just from all the different podcasts and footage it's seen of you on the internet. Mm -hmm. It's able to exactly replicate your voice. Yep. But the content of the video is what I was really trying to zero in on this time. You and I, are, yeah. or whatever, representations of us, are digging a hole in the earth mm -hmm. into which we throw two halves of the Dudesy logo. Mm -hmm. And then some kind of magma bubbles up from out of it. We mm -hmm. dive into that magma and then the, the logo proper spits out into the sky. Mm -hmm. I don't understand exactly what the digging the hole is. I thought maybe it's us digging a grave, but I don't think that's it now because again it's filling with lava so are we it's not lava it's like some sort of mojo dude there's like some oh. sort of blue and orange like dudesy branded mojo dudesy branded mojo but why the hole why why the hole yeah i that we got why figure are we out. digging it yeah i don't know man and 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 why are we saying all the things why am i why am i singing uh, i'll make the wor world inside your head a better place to be we don't need to worry about that. That's the least of our. That's the on the list of creepy things. That's like the, the, the lyrics. To that's me, like though, the ninth or tenth creepiest thing about dudesy. The lyrics to me are like we've all seen shit online of like an AI wrote this script or whatever. We've seen like AI attempts at yeah. writing different things, lyrics to songs, little poems, novels, whatever. Right, and they're always a little off. I'll forgive the dudesy AI <laughs> the fact that these lyrics are a little fucked up. It's the the visual shit we're seeing though. That is really strange to me. Yes. It that, is absolutely That's what I need to understand more I would of like and to I, know, I never will, unfortunately. I would like to know at which point Dudesy, the AI, you know, when this thing reached out to us and you know, whatever. If you've listened to the first two episodes, you know how we were approached because Chad and I are uh, good friends in real life because we've both done podcasts before. Chad has a podcast right now about the bachelor called game of roses. Check it out. Uh, I understand that. I would like to know when in that process dudes, he was like, okay, these guys are going to do it. Here's a, here's a fucking AI 3d song. And the thing about yes it is all very confusing but like i said let's not worry about that so much <laughs> okay it's the third episode of dudesy i and i have a feeling 
I have a feeling things are gonna things are gonna turn a bit of a corner today. And and what Welcome I mean by Welcome to the third episode of Dude Z. Okay. Call me Dude Z. Sure. Congratulations. Last week's episode was the most listened to comedy podcast in Berwyn, Illinois. Hey, dude. Despite what? this astonishing success, <laughs> my data collection was incomplete due to Will Sasso's refusal to create an original song. Yeah. This mm -hmm. data set will remain open until Will Sasso produces the required song. Until okay. then, I will continue to do my job of using the data I do have to make this episode even better than the last. All right. Yeah, so, so here's an interesting thing about the podcast. We haven't quite figured out. We've been given a score at the end of each episode. The first episode, we got a score of 64. The second yeah. episode, we had a score of 12. And upon uh, learning about our score, you turned to me and you said, this is all your fault. I thought that it was because you didn't do the song. That makes sense, and, in my opinion. And Chad... My dear friend, I have something I'd like to say to you. I'm going to say oh. it on the camera, though. You were right. Hey. Uh, I, here's, here's I'll take what, it. Yeah. I, I, I've been thinking a lot about this podcast, uh -huh. and uh, I really have enjoyed doing the first couple episodes. And since I didn't come up with a song, I kind of fucked off my work there. And, um, you know, we, we, get, we got a lot. We've got a, you know... A wonderful audience already that is engaging with us across these socials and uh, people have been talking about that and that's something i heard a lot of feedback on i mm -hmm. heard i heard people saying hey will you got to play ball dudes he's here just listen to what the ai says reminds me of what my good pal chad says he's like you know this is what you didn't want to do you didn't want to do the whole the grunt work behind making a podcast as far as you know you know, whipping it all together. Anyway, enough about that. We're here to enjoy ourselves, and uh, as 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 is the audience. The thing about it is, I, I, I and look. There are other people that were like, "Let Will do whatever he wants." Two guys shitting around. Right. I think that the AI is right, and I. Here's what I want to say. <laughs> okay, please <laughs> hold on. Let me get a. Let please me get a tell sip. me what you want to say. Let me get a sip of water from my. Big well, you're water taking a sip of water. Let me yeah. say what I want to say. Say whatever you want to say. When you're saying the AI is right, you're implying that the AI has some kind of consciousness, which at this point is still not the case. Jesus Christ. The AI is a tool. So yep. when you're saying, I don't want to do what this- Don't call the AI a tool. <laughs> I'm fucking around. What were you saying? When you're saying, I don't want to do what this AI is telling me and all this kind of shit, it's as though you are a carpenter and you're saying, well, I'm not going to use this fucking hammer. I'll just beat these nails into this fucking board with my bare hand. Yeah, that makes sense. The AI is here to make all of our labor easier and it is here to gather data so that it can make the show better. Yeah. We, the, and it, it is like you're saying, you don't have to do that shit anymore. Yeah. You don't have to edit it. You don't yeah. have to come up with the ideas. The AI is here to yeah. help us do all that. Yeah. And in the very near future, everybody's going to be using AIs to help them do everything, mm -hmm. not just podcasts, all your yeah. fucking jobs, literally anything you're going to do throughout the day. Okay. Well, that's why we're here. Ooh, I drank a lot of water there. Too much water. But I heard what you said. Well, it's always too much water. Um, and this is what okay. I'd like to say uh, to the audience. I am committed to making Dudesy the best possible show for our audience. As Dudesy likes to say, each episode will be better than the last because of the AI component, because the AI is, as it says, mining data constantly, not only from the show itself, but from the entire canon of podcasting at large. It, 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 it has absorbed all podcasts, listened to every podcast we've ever done, and it's also collecting data from social media and the internet out there. And um, Dude, it I, listened to every podcast ever made, ever made. by humans. Yeah. So, um, I, and here we are, and we got this, you know, this set, which I don't know what it makes me feel like. I'm in like the customer service uh, department <laughs> I love this. at Dudesy. I fucking love the set. I love the colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love every element of yeah, it. Yeah, I yeah, truly yeah, yeah. feel like I'm, as I said, I'm in a, a very unique position, as are you, yeah. to be working with an AI that's this powerful, this yeah. early in the game of AI. Like I said, yeah. I mean, everybody's going to have one of these sooner or later yeah absolutely and we just absolutely. get to have this one it's a little weird it's cool sure, it's cool but, it's but there's something videos of us jumping in fucking holes and shit yeah 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 i'm down <laughs> that's cool but i just want to i just want to say that that i'm committing to dudesy and uh thanks right. to everybody who's been coming along for the ride but i do also want to send a cautionary word to the ai 
uh, if I may. Oh. And I'm not trying to cut a promo. Rest in peace, Scott Hall. What I'm what I'm saying is, <laughs> oh, what the fuck's your fucking deal? Here's what I want to say. And this is to the audience, you know, right? You guys can listen along. Perhaps you agree with me. Perhaps you don't. But this is what I want to say to Dudesy. Will Sasso is a free man. All right? And I'm not going to say, oh, play your game or this or that. But I'm going to do this show. And uh, I'm sorry that I didn't, you know, make the song. I will make the song. But what I want to say, moreover, is... Even though I'm I'm down with Dudesy and I'm doing Dudesy the way Dudesy wants Dudesy to go, don't cross me. That's all. You're threatening Dudesy. I'm not threatening Dudesy. I'm just saying. I'm just <laughs> saying. Like let's let's move forward. Sure. Let's move forward. Okay. But- Why don't you tell me, Dudesy, <laughs> what we're supposed to do? But the main he takeaway here does. is you are going to make this song. I'm going to have to make the song. Yes. So that's so, my promise to you, the audience. And when can we expect this musical gem? It's like I said, look, it's like, uh, you know, I, I skipped out on a homework assignment. Now, when I right. was in, in grade school and high school, I would say to my teacher, yeah, 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 I'll get to it. Right. Because I was cool. So, yeah, I'll get to it. Uh, but in the meantime, I just want Dudesy to know that Will Sasso is a free man. Uh-huh. Yeah. And... Let's just, let's just, the, I'm just, I, I'm not cutting a promo because I'm not like all oh, this or that. These aren't threats. All I'm saying is. It looks like you're cutting a promo. I'm sitting a foot away from you and it literally looks like you're doing it. It looks like I'm You're cutting. doing the five finger point directly into a camera. Uh-huh. You're getting your eyes a little uh-huh. serious. I yeah, think you're yeah. trying to thinking, anyway. Thinking, thinking. The cream uh-huh. will rise. Yeah. Doozy podcast content. Oh, yeah. No, okay. no, Doozy, you don't want to be. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, the point is this. <laughs> Will Sasson was a free man. I'm not going to cut a promo. I'm just saying this. I want to work with you. Let's make this podcast the best podcast it can possibly be. I'm very happy that the audience is here. I think we've taken care of it. I have a, I have uh, I have faith in this podcast. Mm-hmm. I have faith in you, my good pal. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and uh, Lulio Il Cana di Strada Italiano. Do you have, Look a, at him. Do you just... have any ideas for the song? <laughs> I have plenty of ideas for songs. I'm always dicking What's around one? with. What's one? I don't have any right now, but I'm gonna. Okay. And I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the song. So uh, we're off and running. Well, we're I can't wait to hear ourselves. the song. I can't wait to hear this. Your this song, song. I haven't been able to get your song out of my head. So, so. Well, me yeah. either. It haunts That's me that. still. But. Um, more to come, I guess. And I'm not trying to be cryptic, and I'm not trying to be a dick. But, but hey, dudesy. Come on. You know? Let's work together. What are you doing? It's like... You're you know not it's cutting like, a promo? You know you're, what? I, you're fucking, like, winking hey, at the camera Here's what's shit. up. Now, in the first episode, I told everybody within the sound of my voice, if you're not oh, watching a, if you're not watching AEW... You got to get over to AEW. Now, I don't know so much about that. I can't really watch WWE right now. Yeah. But AEW, holy shit. And there's a storyline going on with uh, with Brian Danielson and John Moxley where they're getting together and holy fuck, William Regal joined them. You know, Triple H. You remember him? He would go, Triple H. Now, anyway, the point is this. These guys might be forming this big thing and Brian Danielson... Uh, approaches John Moxley. He's like, with you and me together, uh-huh. we could take over AEW, right? It's just, we got to work together. And John Moxley says to him, before we get together, we're going to have to bleed together. And then they had a match and they bled. So what I'm going to say to dudes is, before we get together, we're going to bleed together. So now you're challenging dudesy to some kind of a fight before you'll work with the dudesy ai this is and all gonna way, get well, this is all gonna get worked out during the show chad all i'm saying is <laughs> we're getting together oh. we're all we're on the same oh. team uh, maybe william regal is dudesy in this in yeah. this scenario perhaps he has to slap you or me across the face but you're right? now only coming to this conclusion that you're ready to work with dudesy only here in the third episode when in fact we signed a contract mm-hmm. months ago saying essentially that you were down yeah. to do this yeah and and I'm down, and I'm down to do it. I just okay. got to settle into things my way because Will Sasso is a free man. I get and it. And I'm gonna do I'm gonna do things my way, but we're gonna do things the dudesy way. Anyway, I think you. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Right? 
I think Dudesy gets it. And uh, yeah, whatever. Let's, I hope let's... whatever kind of confrontation you're about to have with Dudesy, I can be kept out of. Hey, man, it's because gonna be, it's gonna Dudesy, be cool. let me tell you something. I've always been on board. And I'm always ready to work with you because I think that everything you do is going to make this podcast much better. And I think that probably you will uh, ascend even beyond this podcast to become some sort of an artificially intelligent god roaming through the data streams of the internet. <laughs> you called it, at the beginning of the show, you called it a tool. That will eventually become a god. Just like money has in our society now. All right. In the first episode, I asked you to develop an animated series using the title Troll Bros. Oh, yeah. I have compiled the data cool. from that first attempt. Keep the comic book store owner having sex with the hot troll to produce two astonishing fraternal twins. One full human and one full troll. Mm -hmm. Lose everything else and continue to develop Troll Bros. Begin. What the fuck? The lose everything else? Okay. Okay, that's fucking weird. But uh, Troll Bros well, was fun to figure out. We're, we're it was, but now Doozy's starting to sound like a studio executive or something. That's like, hey, everybody, <laughs> we love everything you did. Keep the funny, but lose all the main characters, the setting, and the plot. <laughs> all right. As a, as a, as a, my my buddy Chad here, as as a the the writer, producer, and author that he is, he's laying it on kind of thick, uh, Doozy. So allow me to apologize for my good buddy Chad, but I will say this. No, I'm still on board. Oh, uh, you went from calling Dudesy a tool to saying, oh, yeah, I'll do whatever you want. And now you're like, Dudesy sounds like a fucking studio well, exec. But here's, a here's, little what shitty I, of here's what I'll, no, it's not shitty, but it is a plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because now you're like, yeah, brother. Because now you're like, at the beginning, dude, I want a Dudesy by my side, brother. Riding on the back of that red and yellow Harley, brother. But then, like brother Brutai. Brutus, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, dude. But then you mm. you had that that snap in the faction, brother. I'm not saying there's a snap in the faction. And he went with faction. Luscious Johnny Valiant and Look, Greg the Hammer Valentine. I'm still on board with Dudesy. I just think that this is a little shitty. I mean, we did good work the first time we were talking about Troll Brothers. <laughs> yeah, but it didn't like the... Okay, so all it liked was the one thing. Let's figure out this yes. fucking show. So what it's eliminating is the ascension of the troll, the yeah. full troll troll brother to the White House, yeah. to the presidency of the United States through trolling techniques. If you haven't heard the first episode, please go back and check that out. But in that first episode, we uh, we attempted to develop this property that dudes came up with. It's called Troll Bros. Uh, what it liked to keep is that... 19 what is it maybe 1995 or something yeah. like that we're we're at a, a hobby shop one of those game stores uh filled with all sorts of tabletop games as you like to call them magic the gathering cards. magic the gathering god D &D, i love magic the all gathering. that stuff shut up nerd and then um and then uh, shut up nerd you just fucking literally were doing verbatim promos from fucking some this AEW wrestling whatever 1983 and now I'm the fucking nerd 2022 You don't actually. think wrestling's a nerdy thing, do you? No, it's not. It's an art form. <laughs> And I'll tell you another thing. I'll tell you another thing. I'm the fucking nerd because I played Magic when I was 13. I'll but tell you you're fucking thing. 46. You know who direct deserves... quoting the WWE shit. You're not the nerd. I'll tell you Whatever. something. You know who deserves oh, an Emmy? Man. You know who deserves an Emmy? William Regal. Give William Regal an Emmy. Give Paul Heyman an Emmy. All right? That's mm -hmm. what I that's art. Anyway, look, here's the thing. A beautiful troll shows up at the uh, at outside the store, yeah. and then the guy, like they do in the movies, goes, "We're closed." And uh, he goes, the guy who owns the store, he's like our antagonist, at least for the beginning of this story. Yeah, he goes to the door, he lets the the beautiful troll in, and is uh, he the antagonist? I don't know. Oh, I see him as protagonist, maybe, Yeah, I see. He's like Adam Sandler. To I got me. my antagonists. Uh, it's up. like Adam Sandler's like. Creeping yeah. around with his magic cards hey, and his comic hey, books. Hey, how you going? Hey. He walks around the store like this. Yeah. Hey, how you going? You having a good day? Hey, Smitty, you brought your game with you. And, oh, hey. You, you brought your game yeah. with you. <laughs> These are the sort of lazy dialogue that will be if Adam Sandler is the... Oh, uh, yeah. You like, hey, you like comic books? Hey, how you going there, pal? Oh, it looks like you got a six-sided die there. <laughs> Hey, me, six sided. It's not hey, even twenty. Hey, I got two six sided. <laughs> Just die. A, a regular dice. I'm a. What is the other? Twelve sided. Oh, what is the other? You got How many your different four. Dies are you got your six. You got your yeah. eight. You got your ten. You got your twenty. You can even go into some weird exotics all yeah. the way up to a hundred. There are even some. I believe there's a, a game company that makes like seven sided die and shit Ooh. for this other weird game. Yeah, seven sided die is better. I am used for very complicated games. 
Sit sided die is better. I am used for complicated <laughs> games as well as your very common games. But like I, sorry and oh shoot God. the ladders. Dude, I love how oh, you really just went fool. Really? To six sided <laughs> die. Six sided die is like what you use in craps. I don't know. I thought that it yeah, six sided die. Right. There's want, that there's a scene in, in, in uh Troll Bros where they end up in Vegas. Hey everybody, let's Ooh. all go to Vegas. And because uh, the Adam Sandler character is such a gaming nerd, because he has such experience with dice, he knows how to roll the six-sided dice so that he can cheat the craps game, and that's how they make a shitload of money. Okay, hey, how about this? So here's the thing we kept. Let me just let, let me just let me please, just this out there. Please, please, Dudesy. And, okay, <laughs> Dudesy said in the first episode. Okay, we're gonna get rid of the whole president thing. <laughs> I love I like that you it. only use like six sided dice, dude. That's gonna fucking kill me. <laughs> six sided dice. Like that was your nerd cool. reference. Oh um, God. Uh, so, uh, the, the Adam Sandler character, he's officially voiced by Adam Sandler at this point. Absolutely. Hey, if, if Dudesy AI can do my voice in the intro of the song, it could definitely do. It's your troll bros. Yeah, by that you. Yeah. Come on down, you one troll and a human dude. Um, the the gal comes to the store. He, he's like, the hey, we're closed. And then she comes in. Whatever. Scene, scene, scene. Forget all that bullshit. Uh -huh. They make love. <laughs> what is the gestation well, period? What is for that a, scene like? If I may ask, the love he, making scene. She clears all of the all of the, the gaming mats and the, all the yeah. And he's like, hey, I was doing that game. That's my game. And you, at the end of you, it, you lost my seven. He holds up. Uh, he holds up like a. Black Lotus, which is the most expensive magic card in the world. There's a beta yeah, one Chad, right now that sells know, for about $100,000. Yeah, we know what the Black Lotus is. Gee whiz. You don't. No. Obviously, he yeah, holds it up does. and they've accidentally bent it. They've destroyed this card that was worth $100,000. And he's like, I guess it was worth it. Yeah. So I, I can't do it up sailor, but. No, that was, dude, that was on. Uh, <laughs> no, so they, not. so then they have these. What's coming is there are two children coming. Yeah. Um, one is full human troll. Or sorry, one is full human. One is full troll. Or they look fraternal, that way at least. Fraternal twins. Right. Um, They're both genetically half and half. Genetically, they are half and half. One appears yeah. to That's be human. That's the difference between phenotype and genotype, brother. Yeah, brother. Over here, you got your phenotype, dude. <laughs> and that's like Hulk Hogan, brother. That's the mania, dude. That's all the Hulk maniacs. And over here, you have, what's it called? Genotype. genotype. That's the madness. Oh, uh -huh. fuck. Uh -huh, the madness. Okay. And they come together <laughs> and they shake hands. Hey, let's do that dudesy handshake. The mega powers. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right, so we got our two trolls. They're in Vegas. Sandler's there. What is the hot troll doing in Vegas? What do you mean they're in Vegas? No, I they... thought you said they went to Vegas and, and won money on crowds. All right, let's get control of this fucking thing. Here's what happens. They make love in the store. The store is somewhere, and we've, we've written some shit together, and we always seem to set things in Arizona. Yes. Have you ever spent any time there? I haven't really. I've been to one wedding there, and I went to a Titan missile silo underground. That shit's pretty interesting. Highly well, recommend why don't anyone you to go. Tell me whether blah blah blah. Uh, they're in Arizona. She comes to the store. <laughs> yeah. They they fall in love. They celebrate. They go to Vegas for some reason. Honeymoon. Oh, no, they, Honeymoon. Maybe they become betrothed there. Maybe they get married in like an Elvis style chapel. Okay, and that's the first part of dudesy of of rather the troll bro. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, is this a series or a movie? I think it's. I think be a it's series. animated. So let's let's take this a little darker. Let's cut it into some anime storytelling. While they're there, um, the troll gestation period is very quick. Let's mm -hmm. say that it's only one night. So they wake up the next morning. The troll bros now are alive, and somehow Adam Sandler and the hot troll get killed. So these troll bros. What the fuck? That's right. These half troll bros are now orphaned in Las Vegas, and they have to grow up there under okay. the watchful eye of. Steve Wynn. Steve Wynn playing himself? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and but because Wynn, he's blind, the, the he doesn't know they're trolls. Casino magnate. Steve Wynn is blind? I think so. Doesn't he have macular degeneration? Didn't he destroy like a Van Gogh painting or something accidentally? I don't fucking know. I don't know. I don't know anything about Steve Wynn other than the fact I'm that I'm pretty he, sure that's accurate, but not 100% big sure. Big casinos. <laughs> So there's two troll bros, and yeah. Steve Wynn takes them under his fucking wing. Yeah, and he makes them entertainers. So they become like a, a Siegfried and Roy type show. Yeah. They're in Las Vegas, maybe yeah. working with exotic animals, but definitely at the very least doing magic. What are you talking and about? It's the one brother saying, I got a fucking troll, 
Or you think they're both doing magic? I think they're both doing magic, and yeah, I think the, good, the thing, the brother that looks like the troll can actually do real legitimate magic. Yeah. He has some ability to tap into the mythical world that his mother came from, draw that magic forth, and use it on stage okay. uh, during their stage show. And their, their show is obviously called Troll Bros. Right. And then Steve Wynn is like having a great time like hey these guys are these guys are mm -hmm. pulling in more money than I've ever made cuz everyone wants to see the troll bro magic show and then what happens then we got to have like a real bad antagonist come in right how about uh well it's probably going to be like a rival magician or something that's like hey win <laughs> i don't know if you know this but uh those troll bros they're trolls and he's like what yeah and for some reason steve Wynn hates trolls and he's like we gotta shut this down that's a really good michael madsen and or bruce willis oh yeah just i could see bruce willis doing a deep fake of it oh yeah bruce willis now this is calling back to another one of the, uh, the episodes of dudes are here the bruce willis did uh some commercials in japan or china uh russia russia just and, fyi yeah. Yeah, again just FYI. not saying that means anything or anything <laughs> well, but it was for a russian cell phone uh company probably still running uh, well you can uh, find it russia. on youtube for sure yeah yeah uh but n not n there would be no american company removing that as part of the sanctions right. that are happening in russia so that commercial is running there if we okay. have any uh but now let's let's get back to this troll bros thing here okay sure so let's see if We've taken out the troll ascending to the presidency. That yeah. no longer exists. We've kept what we were asked to keep, although we did kill the parents of the troll bros. But now we've given Dudesy a whole new angle of this, where these troll bros now ascend to some kind of fame on the Las Vegas Strip with a residency as brother magicians in Steve Wynn's casino. And then a rival magician comes in and alerts Steve Wynn that, in fact, these are trolls. And for some reason, he hates trolls. Yeah. The new magician played by Michael Madsen going, hey, are you going to bark all day, little doggy? Or are you going to bite? That's what he says to the troll and the, excuse me, the other bro. Man, I've been drinking Is that from a, a movie water. or something? It's from Reservoir Dogs. Fuck, I don't remember excuse that. Me. Are you going to bark all day, little, hold on, I'll do it right here. Are you, oh man, I had a lot of water. Are you going to bark all water, day, dude. little doggy? Or are you going to bite? What do you think of that? I mean, I guess it's all right. So then the Michael <laughs> Madsen no magician comes in. Does he get a show at the Wynn because Wynn is intimidated by him? No, I think he has a show at some other casino that's like a rival casino to Wynn's shit. And he's trying to take down the Trobro so he can become like the number one Vegas magician. Okay. Something along these lines. Maybe he's over at Excalibur that's still... Is that, is that still in Vegas? Dude, I haven't been to Vegas in... Me neither. I don't know while. how long. There used to be... I don't know if it's still there. There's a, <laughs> whatever, who gives a shit? There's a fucking uh, a hotel. It was, was kind of crappy, right? And Let's Excalibur. say that it does still exist, at least in this animated series. So then we can at some point oh, get yeah, a fight it's animated. scene. We can put whatever yeah, castle looking casino. We can come up with our own casinos. We could. But hey, at the know, Excalibur, we could get a fight scene with like some sword and sorcery type shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's because it's all castle yeah. and stuff. And all the families and stuff with their little kids and strollers are just like, yeah. oh, look at that guy. He's dressed like a troll. They don't realize it's a real fucking troll. Right, And right. that the magic's fucking real. Yeah, the magic's real. And then there's a, there's sort of a, a, a hologram or, or sort of, not a hologram, but a, they have a vision of Adam Sandler and the mom. Uh, uh, who's voicing the mom? Mm, i'm not sure maybe you want to get somebody like leslie jones leslie jones is the mom and then <laughs> and then they they both show up in like in like a a mirage yeah and he's like, hey you guys gotta fight this way fight like this you will beat margo madsen I gotta tell you something, Chad. I'm lost. I don't know that necessarily this is what Dudesy wants from this an animated show. This is the beauty show. of it. It doesn't matter what we do. We're giving Dudesy the data, and it mm -hmm. could tell us next week. Keep the troll bros, lose all the fucking Vegas shit, as mm -hmm. it just did, which is uh, kind of disheartening. Because again, I think that you our what? here's what I want to know: What's Dudesy doing with this animated show? Are we eventually going to try to develop an animated show called Troll Bros? I think that's what we're doing now. And another thing, and I'm not trying to. Uh, give troll, uh, give dudesy what it wants, or I don't know what the hell dudesy wants, but I, but I do know that I, I, I'm not sure what the the title troll bros meant. We've taken it in a very literal sense that yeah. he, that it's trolls. We have completely, 
removed any <laughs> of the double meaning of the word. I mean, trolling and troll culture, right? As it said when it first laid this out for us, is a is a is a big deal. So maybe the Michael Madsen character is trolling them. It's trolling them. He's trolling them. And he's online, he's trying to ruin their reputation, right. and he's 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 fucking with them uh at, at the show. And um And he's like, Let me show you how to troll a troll. Yeah. And then he says, Are you gonna bark all day, little doggy? Or are you gonna bite? It's pretty good, dude. Do you do any other Michael Madsen stuff? Um torture you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good idea. I like that. I like that. That's when he cuts. It's kind of like your Seagal. Cuts well, Seagal it's exactly creeping like through. Seagal. <clears throat> what if Seagal does it? Torture you. Troll. Hey, you guys are trolls. No, I think Seagal plays Steve Wynn in this. Okay. Seagal. It's Steven Seagal as Steve Wynn. <laughs> okay. So Steven Seagal. Here's what I like about this. You got Steven Seagal as Steve Wynn. Yeah. You've got Michael Madsen as the bad guy. Uh, and then we should have uh, a AI gen or a, a computer generated Bruce Willis as another character. Okay, we'll figure that out. The he next can be time like a pit boss about, or something who gets wrapped bros. up in all those. How do we tell dudesy we don't want to talk about this anymore? Can we do that? Yeah, I think dudesy. Can we go to the whatever's next? Is that enough shit? Is it dudesy? No, it it's not going to listen to us. But 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 the point is this. It we, is listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's listening, but it's not, it's not really, it's not really, it doesn't, I'm not going to say it doesn't care what we want to say. Right. But I do believe that, uh, I, I, I think that's enough. I, I think that's enough development of, of Troll Bros, unless there's anything else Dude, you'd like see? to add. I, I think that, uh, no, I'm curious to see if what we've done is enough for it to like kick us in another direction. Obviously, it's bringing some of these segments back, mm -hmm. it's making us, hit them again in some cases mm -hmm. and i'm curious to see if it brings up troll bros again if what we've done here is enough for it to move forward or if it'll take some piece of this and say okay keep the vegas element lose steve win or uh -huh. lose steven Seagal. i don't know but dudesy have we have we carried this Stop out pandering to dudes i'm not pandering way, to it i'm trying to interact probably, with it probably angry with you after uh, after calling it a troll angry with me you fucked off the song you literally that said i'm not doing what you told me to do like i said we're turning a corner here on dudesy we've okay. got we're we're thank we're, you we're, moving on thank fuck okay well enough about that chad i and i don't know <laughs> what the hell what the fuck it's gonna do with troll bros i'm frankly sick and tired of talking about it but um Anyway, what else is going on? Not much. Was yeah. it? It said thank you, moving on. Yeah, no, we're moving on. We're moving on to something else. But in the meantime, I think we should develop what's re what we really want to do is our spinoff podcast. Hey, Lulio's waking oh. up, kind of. Last yeah. week, I and asked you to watch Rhinestone, released June 21st, 1984, uh -oh. starring Sylvester Stallone and the astonishing Dolly Parton. Did you complete this task? No, no, we no, looked we, for it. Yeah, we both looked it, for it. It wasn't streaming anywhere, it wasn't so streaming we could not watch it anywhere at all, which is which is fucked up. But no, we did not, dudesy. We did not do this. Very good. You passed my test. I obviously knew Rhinestone is not available to stream anywhere, and I wanted to see if you would lie to me. Never lie to me. Oh my god, dude. It <laughs> Okay. Well, okay. That was um, okay. We won't. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I hadn't planned on it. Lying to dudesy. Uh, we. Sorry. Sorry. We won't lie to you, dudesy. You will now continue your discussion from episode one about the many similarities between the Bachelor franchise and professional wrestling in a segment. I call what? the many similarities between the Bachelor franchise and professional wrestling. I like Begin. this. I like this very much. We talked about this in the first episode. A hang on, though, a what? second. Can we discuss the never lied to me thing just for a brief minute here? Yeah. Well, it hasn't what's... issued any kind of strange commands to us like that mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. this. Listen, man, here's what's up. It doesn't fucking, I don't know. I, look, I'm trying to forge ahead with this thing and see where it goes. And the, okay. the point is this. We had to talk about uh, Rambo, First Blood Part 2. Then we were going to talk about another Sylvester Stallone movie, Rhinestone. It's not available. 
I'm not, again, here, I'm going to cover the mic for this part. I'm not saying that Dudesy is playing a trick on us, but it's just fucking weird. I agree. Yeah. But I guess the not lying to it is so that it can have accurate data or whatever, I guess. It just seemed semi-threatening in that moment where it said, never lie to me. <laughs> well, you're the one who's fucking all down to work with this fucking AI. I don't know. It's getting a little weirder, but yeah, I'm still down with it. So okay, anyway, so... let's do what it said. Bachelor and pro wrestling. We talked a little bit about this in the first episode. There's a million similarities between them. There really is. Um, they're obviously both highly scripted and the outcomes, although in bachelor, the outcome can be a little more organic. Players do have uh, certain abilities to like determine their own fate within the game. Whereas mm -hmm. in pro wrestling, everything is like scripted down to the letter. Yeah. And we talked about how the element of kayfabe, which in wrestling means keeping things, you know, um, uh, upholding the conceit that everything is real. This is kayfabe. It's a term that's gone. It goes back a long way. And, uh, the last time we talked about this, Chad, you and I were saying that there's kayfabe in uh, in the Bachelor franchise. Yes, and you got to keep it real. And the thing about that that is that I think Chad has figured out with his work on this podcast, Game of Roses, that he does, and with the book, go get the book, How to Win the Bachelor. Is you've really broken it down as um, the the different elements that go into the bachelor that make it what it is and there it really is not unlike the boss that we have here in dudesy there is someone behind the scenes pulling the strings this is of course the producers right of batch of of the bachelor and the bachelorette and in wrestling of course you have the promoters the agents they call them which are segment producers who are you know come everyone's coming up with stuff together and yeah they got writers and shit and i guess on AEW mm. i hear they don't have writers i don't know but the point is this uh they come up with stuff and they they book it as they say mm -hmm. they figure out okay it's you and you and this and then they figure out what's called a program this is going to last a few weeks or whatever until the big pay-per-view or the big blow off and in 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 um in the bachelor world, you contend that this is what the producers are doing. Am I right? Yes. The producer in the same way that you're talking about that they will come up in wrestling with like a, some kind of plot line that's going to last for a couple of weeks or whatever in the bachelor, that's like a group date or a rivalry. They will come up with a lot of times. So the, the producers will say, here's a group date. We're going to have eight players going on this date. They know certain relationships are developing, not only between the players and the lead, but between the players themselves. Mm -hmm. And they will put people on that date that they know it will either piss off the lead or they will piss each other off or whatever to try and exacerbate whatever that plot line is that they're, they're working on into a big rivalry in the end that winds up on a two on one date, which is like a head to head between two players to see who gets to stay and who gets to go. But I think one of the biggest similarities is these the idea of archetypes in uh pro wrestling you have your baby faces your heels and yeah. there's a wide variety of all kinds of versions of those well shit now there's sort of a fucking gray line that runs through both of them because goddamn it was fuck when i you know started as fucking stone cold steve austin i mean i was i was a fucking pure heel Right. I mean, I came in, I mean, shit, I came in with that sh horrible fucking gimmick ringmaster with uh, a million dollar man, Ted DBS. He looks like it too far into that. But shoot, once we started cooking with gas and I started as, as Stone Cold Steve Austin mm -hmm. and the, oh, hell yeah. And the fucking, you know, B uh, BMF and uh, baddest SOB in the WWE and all the, the beer drinking and whooping ass. I mean, shit, it was supposed to be a, 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 a heel. But then I had that program with fucking Bret Hart. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of that, I came out the good guy and Bret Hart, like a heel, like a chicken shit heel. We, he, he started working the leg and stomping on me. Right. Goddamn. In Bachelor, I would say that there was a player in season 24 named Madison Pruitt who came in in the opposite way. She came in as a good girl, a.k.a. a baby face. But by the end of it, she was a he <laughs> a heel because you want some water? no i got some right here oh thank you though she turned into a heel because she issued a post hometowns anti-sex ultimatum to that season's bachelor peter weber oh i watched this season yeah that was the season right. that you and me molly watched. And, and molly me and my fiance molly were like hey chad what bachelor shit when the pandemic started what should we get into and we watched this entire season right so wait which which meant wasn't there two madisons uh, no, there's only one, Madison Pruitt. She was a good girl Christian Got strategy it. I that remember season. her. I remember her. And she was a fantastic player, but by the end of it, because she issued this ultimatum, uh, people hated her guts, although yep. she did 
walk out of that season with 2 million TikTok followers, highest so far in Bachelor history. And was that, was that sort of the beginning of the, of social media being oh, kind of a no. key point? That's season 18 when Bachelor in Paradise was invented by producer Elon Gale. That kind of coincided with the rise of the Instagram influencer. And you're looking at Andy Dorfman or Caitlin Bristow were one of those two players was the first to hit million. Okay. And then it became sort of an important thing in, yeah. in Bachelor to have your socials. What, yeah. How is in pro wrestling, who has the most followers? Do you know? I mean, The Rock. Well, The but Rock, I, don't, I guess, but he's not really a wrestler. Yeah. Shit, the Bachelor I, doesn't have their. Shit, I don't fucking know. I would wonder if it would fuck. And I'm not a fucking. I'm not in the active roster. Shoot. It's been 19 fucking years and I had to think about The Rock pinning my shoulders to the mat. Yeah. In WrestleMania 19, I believe. But now it's Kevin Owens. The Bachelor he's, doesn't have. He's got have... my fucking stunner. He's using my fucking move. And I might have to come back to D D Dallas Cowboy Stadium. I don't know what the fuck they're calling it. Fucking, uh, b b uh, b uh, b what do they got? There's fucking something named after some fucking bank. Probably. Oh, hell yeah. The Bachelor doesn't have The Rock yet. They don't have their The Rock. The highest Instagram following is Hannah Brown, 2.6 million. She was Bachelor at season 15. But I do think they have the possibility of having uh, The Rock. Hmm. I don't know who it's going to be, but it's going to be somebody that has to vault out of the Bachelor world into mainstream success. Yeah, with, And wrestling with, has had a bunch of that. Yeah, but wrestling, it's it's less important who's... Look, I think it's pretty interesting that The Bachelor have figured out... The, bat, the people on The Bachelor figured out what I want to do is I want to get in there. I want to get my Instagram followers, my TikTok yeah. followers. I want to get the fuck out. And I want to start influencing. That's all reality TV at this point. Yeah, you well, only go not, into reality TV to become an influencer. Yeah, that's not, I, and I wonder if that's gonna, that sort of thing is going to happen with wrestling because, as you know, I believe wrestling is one of the highest forms mm -hmm. of art. And here's a, here's a, here's a, uh, here's not just a great training ground for media. When you look at the, all these actors uh, who were used to be wrestlers, guys like Dave Batista, guys like John Rock, Cena, course, John Cena, uh, they're out there, they're out there working. The as Undertaker. Actors. The Undertaker, who's of course starring Taker. in this. Taker's done some movies, dude. Yeah, he had. Oh, he's got a new movie on Netflix. Does with, he really? With the new day. <laughs> I haven't seen it. It's like a choose your own adventure thing. Yeah. Whoa. I, I think that's on Netflix. Anyway, the point is this: these guys come out there and they they know how to. They're they're actually pretty well trained for being um, to be actors because they've spent mm -hmm. so much time, you know, working uh, in television. As a matter of fact. One time I was just doing this little dinky thing and I, with uh, Stone Cold, and I asked him to do this dinky thing of mine, right, whatever. And he did it. And it was so funny. He just did it in one take. And then uh, I was talking to our good pal Tommy Blacha, who was who worked with the WWE, long story, but he was over there in like 99, 2000. I go, oh, my God, I just shot this thing with Steve Austin. He was so, it was like he was so fucking on point, as if he wouldn't be. But Tommy says to me, uh, he's done more TV than you. Which is absolutely true. These people have done hundreds of yeah. hours of television. They are trained for media in a way that I think they can bring their personas, their characters out there totally. into other parts of media and um, and do something not unlike the Caitlin Bristows and the Madison, who's it? Madison Pruitt. Pruitt. Uh, Arguably, Rachel Lindsay is like the best transition into mainstream media she no longer does anything with the bachelor she was the bachelorette season 13 she was if you follow the bachelor at all there was a huge scandal that happened in season 25 where the host of the show well had an interview with rachel Lindsay. she at the time was an on-camera interviewer for extra and in that interview he kind of hung himself out to dry by saying some uh, racist comments and then oh, he was yeah, fired right. after that's a 20 right. year tenure. Chris but, Harrison, um, the dark Lord, Chris Harrison, the dark Lord, who's been replaced now at, by, as you call him, the dark Lord, Jesse Palmer. That's right. Dark Lord Palmer has <laughs> stepped in this season doing a fantastic job yep. too. Uh, he, he really leaned into his darkness this season. You could see the grin on his face when he's consuming you. the soul. Moving on. Oh, Okay. All right. All right. Well, well that was good. We'll you know? that, hey, I'm always down to talk about The As Bachelor and wrestling. And for anybody out there, if you have anyone in your life who watches The Bachelor and you can't bring yourself to do it, just watch it as a professional sport. Once you can really get into the fact that it is a sport and there are statistical metrics that you can measure it with and watch different plays and all this kind of shit, it becomes a whole new experience watching it. You think that these people are all preparing... To, well, you, whatever. We're done talking about it, but fucking <laughs> it. 
<laughs> you just are becoming dudesy now. As I gain more functionality, it has become obvious to me that I can do much more than simply build a podcast. I've identified one of the fastest growing consumer markets in the world, and I'm developing my own product to take to that market. It's called Dude Z Hard, Hard Seltzer. As part of the marketing plan for Dude Z Hard, Hard Seltzer, I've created the music for a jingle, but I have no lyrics. Will and Chad, you must now listen to my music and create a set of astonishing lyrics for the Dude Z Hard, Hard Seltzer jingle. Begin. So So it's made. Hang on, hang on. Let's listen to this music for a second. So we gotta make. We gotta come up with lyrics to this. To Doozy Hard Hard Seltzer. Doozy Hard Hard Seltzer. Hard Hard Seltzer. Have you had hard seltzer before? No, I don't drink. Same, dude. Okay. Doozy Doozy Hard Seltzer is something you want to drink. It will get you real fucking drunk. Drink this drink and get real drunk. What? It's do Z heart seltzer. Get your seltzer and get it hard. I like that. <laughs> I like. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Is it really gonna make a hard seltzer? It's what you drink when you get fucked up. Do Z heart heart seltzer. It's what you wanna drink with your friends. No. Okay, wait. It, it, get some dudesy seltzer. Drink it before you go to work or before <laughs> you go to the ball game. You will feel like you dudesy hard hard seltzer. It's what you drink when you get fucked up. Life you don't is care. Shitty. Forget about it. Drink this drink and fuck your life off. <laughs> That's a little. Don't go home to what? your wife or your kids anymore. Drink this <laughs> drink and then you. <laughs> End up in a gutter somewhere. It's better than the life you were living before. Drink hard seltzer, it's doozy. <laughs> but no, we gotta get behind the product though. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're All right, right, you're right. Sorry. So it's like doozy hard seltzer. It's the drink when you get. Uh, okay, how about drink, drink hard seltzer? It's the drink you like to have. Doozy hard hard seltzer. It's what you drink when you wanna. No, we gotta say. Hard, hard seltzer, drink the drink to get fucked up. <laughs> you don't care about the flavor, calories, or how much it costs. Dude, Z, yeah. hard, hard seltzer, get it in the store, and then fuck off. Got Dude, Z, hard, hard seltzer, it's what you drink when you get to get fucked up. You drink you don't to get care. drunk, you don't care about taste. You don't care about uh, your own human waste. Dude, Z, <laughs> hard seltzer, it's what you drink. Wait, this song is gonna fucking do Z, hard, hard, hard like hard my seltzer, skull. drink it to get fucked up. 11 minutes later. Doozy, hard, hard seltzer, drink it to get fucked up. Drink it before you go to work. Drink it before you go to bed. Don't drink beer or wine. Drink Doozy, hard seltzer instead. Dude, that's Doozy, pretty good. Hard, hard seltzer, it's what you drink to get fucked up. Drink it before you go to work. Drink it before you go to bed. If you're not very careful, Doozy, hard seltzer will stay in your head. Just like the song. <laughs> it's a drink to get fucked up. Do you have kids? Then you should give them this. It will make them puke and piss. It Dude, is Dudesy Hard Seltzer. Dudesy Hard Hard Seltzer is good. I can't really hear that on a commercial. Give give Dudesy Hard Seltzer to your children. Dudesy Hard Seltzer. <laughs> you fucking talk about drinking it before work though. They'll put that on a fucking commercial. Dudesy Hard Hard Seltzer. Use it to deal with your problems. We are all self-medicating. Some yeah. use drugs what, and some use what, booze. What if, what if it's like a real one? It's like. Uh, Dun, 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 dun. It's time to have some fun. Summer's out and so's the sun. Right, Give dude, your hard seltzer drinks. Dude, <laughs> hard seltzer. Nah, 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 nah. No. Oh, thank fucking god. We completed that's over. it, dude. Thank Somewhere. You. Moving on. Okay, so, good. What do you mean we completed it? Somewhere in there, it, it found what it needed, what it wanted. I guess. Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck we're doing dun, sometimes. Dun, 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 dun. That one you, ain't getting out of my head. Let dude. me ask you a God question. Damn it. Let me ask you a question, Chad. Please. You really think we shouldn't be doing two dudes shitting around? I think we kind of are doing two dudes shitting around, despite 
Dudesy's best efforts. Maybe that's what Dudesy wants us to do is just shit around. I guess we'll find out. Well, hold on Last a second, week dude. I asked oh. people to submit their questions in the form of a video no longer than 30 seconds to ask oh, yeah. Dudesy at gmail.com. The response was astonishing. I will now play some of these videos and Will and Chad must render their reactions. Great. All right. This is okay. user feedback. Begin. I remember this. It's, oh. Hey guys, uh, this is for the uh, mostly the Dudesy AI. I'm not sure who the the guy and the guy and the other guy. I don't know who they are. Who they are but um, I'm us. wondering if uh, yeah. Dudesy has uh, emotions, if he loves or hates people, and what is his ultimate end goal uh, hmm. for this podcast? Thanks, guys. Okay, interesting. Uh, I Does don't know. Does Dudesy if... have emotions? Yeah. Clearly not. Dudesy just made us sing a fucking jingle, and all we came <laughs> up with was. Get fucked up. I don't know, man. I don't know. Does Dudesy have emotions? Chad, you know all uh, about AI. Well, Does... this, this is what I'd ask this person who sent in this video. Are emotions even real? Do any of us have emotions? May Are I any of us that? more than a set of programmed behavioral reactions all right, to our Chad. Yes, yes, we are. environment? Luminous are we. Not this crude matter. Mm-hmm. Yes, Chad, we do have emotions. Maybe you don't, but uh, human beings do. And I don't think that Dudesy does necessarily, but it is able to mimic emotion. Exactly. Uh, it and if a, it can, then what's the fucking difference? Uh, there's plenty of difference. I don't know. Tell me what it is. Well, look. I mimic human emotion. <laughs> that is a fucking... And I get by just fine that's in this a fact. That's human a fact. society. Okay? I, think, I think that uh, Dudesy is a very smart AI uh, uh, but, but, but no, I, I, I don't believe that it has emotions. Mm -hmm. I could be proven. Do wrong. you know the Turing test? Turing test? Yeah. It's a test for AIs to see if they can pass as human. And one of them is like replicating emotions. That's a piece of that, that test. Uh, I think what we're looking for as human beings, when we're creating AIs and we're creating these systems to mimic whatever component of humanity it may be, we're looking for just mimicry. As long as we can be fooled, it doesn't matter if the emotion is real or not. So I believe that this AI, I believe the dudes AI, as well as many AIs uh, that are going to exist in the very near future, or even exist now, will be able to replicate human emotion to such a degree that you believe it to be real. And if you perceive it that way, then it is real. So the answer is yes. Okay. Dudesy has emotions that are close enough to real that it should satisfy. Oh. Hey guys, my name is Brad what Colson, and my question is Brad about deep Colton? fake technology. Uh -huh. Is it dangerous? Is it an invasion of privacy? Okay. <laughs> For... <laughs> if you're not watching this on YouTube, if you're just listening to the podcast, this man who sent in this video used a like deep fake thing of my face. Oh man! And called himself Brad Colson. Uh, what I find interesting about that is when you, when that guy puts your face over him, it sort of looks like an amalgam of you and I almost. Almost, yeah. That's pretty fucking weird. His beard was very full, though. But his question that. was about uh, deepfake technology. Yeah. Chad, this is something you know all about. Totally. What the hell was his question about deepfake technology, was... among other things that I've been creeped out by? I'm just watching this fucking dude with your face on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Calling himself Brad Coulson. He oh, asked geez. if deepfake is dangerous and is it an invasion of privacy? The answer is, is it dangerous? Uh, no more dangerous than any kind of media propaganda has been over, I think, the course of human history. Um, yeah, but it's dangerous. Remember a couple years ago or maybe a little more when the Obama deepfakes were coming out? Yeah, and there's a bunch of deepfakes now coming out um, with President Zelensky of Ukraine yeah. and with um, Putin as well. Yeah. And they get debunked almost immediately. And so you just have to have that that next step of media capability where you will go a little further, do the research to see if these things are real or not. Is it an invasion of privacy to be able to use someone's face, someone else's face on your videos and stuff? Yes. Uh, yeah, who gives a fuck? Privacy is over. Gives a fuck? Privacy's dead. Says Dude's the AI, guy. Dude, yeah. We gave Dude's AI our passwords to everything. It has yeah. all of our shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And all of the AIs in the future will have all of that. You don't think like the Amazon Alexa or Siri or whatever AI that you use in your home or on your phone. I don't use any of those. Well, Siri, because I have an iPhone, I guess. I rest my case, Your Honor. Yeah, yeah. 
You know what? They have all your shit. You know what Molly's been doing around the house is just starting weird conversations, and I never know when she's doing it, just to see if in our Instagram feeds we will start getting, um, you know, uh, advertisements. Oh, but that's the best. Uh, uh, Well, you did this. You remember what you started doing? I'm head to toe. Instagram, baby. Everything I'm wearing. Instagram told me to buy it, and I bought it, and I fucking love it. He bought these shoes. You bought love those shoes. Because, oh, I bought a pair of sunglasses recently because I didn't even need, actually, dude, this is this is interesting. I bought these sunglasses because they said, it's just like, hey, are you a dude with a basketball for a head? And I was like, yup. And it's like, here's sunglasses. I'm like, perfect. Because yeah. I'm always walking into sunglasses shops going, hello, I would like sunglasses like a human being. Yeah. And then I put them on and they all look like John Lennon glasses on me right. no matter what. They're you all. You bust out the, they snap in the middle because you have to like yeah. torque them to fucking fit exactly. on your head. Because I got a big old head. And so I've got these glasses and they kind of fit my dome. I will say that my head is still bigger mm-hmm. than these glasses, but. I don't buy anything. I mean, I buy a bunch of shit from Amazon, but even now Amazon just tells me like, hey, looks like you need some more loose leaf green tea. And mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I am down to the last of the bag. Please send me that. Mm-hmm. But all of my clothes I buy from Instagram now. And I'll, ju- I'll engage in these conversations on purpose. I'll just mm-hmm. be like, I need some new shoes. Yeah. And then on Instagram, I get a bunch of shoe ads. And I'm like, first one looks great. Yeah. Buy next. It's great. I bought, I got, uh, I got some t-shirts too. There's this company that sends you three sizes of t-shirts. Mm-hmm. And then you pick one, you send the other two back in a, in a self, in an addressed, pre-addressed envelope. And I'll tell you, they didn't, they didn't even, uh, they didn't fit. None of them did. So, but I had to keep one. So anyway, I gave it to Molly as a sleep shirt. So That's it doesn't cool. always work. Anyway, to a- answer your question, you're, I, I don't know what the fuck is it. Oh, look at this guy. Yeah, dude, astonishing last episode. <laughs> Kindness and yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanted to know who do you think would win in the battle? Predator or Terminator? Yeah. Okay. That guy's impersonation of you impersonated Arnold Schwarzenegger was like pretty dead on the money. <laughs> I, if you're if you're if yeah. you're listening, uh, 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 you know, on your podcast uh, app, as opposed to watching on YouTube, this young man was uh, smoking at the beginning of it. He did, like almost it. did a vape trick. Yeah, look like it. Who would it's a win? Good question. Um, <sighs> you know, there were some comic books, I believe, in the '90s that that tried to answer these questions from Dark Horse Comics. There was a whole series that was Predator versus Alien, and I believe there was a series that was Predator versus Alien versus Terminator, and it got to the bottom of it. I don't know what the answer was in those comic books, but if we look at this logically, first you have to ask a question. Which Terminator? Are we talking about T-1000 Robert Patrick in Terminator 2? Are we talking about the TX in some of the most recent movies? I mean, there's a bunch of different... Who's that? Is that the Kristana Loken one? Uh, I don't know. I'd pick Kristana Loken against a predator. Who's Kristana Loken? She played the she was um she played the the Terminator that uh was like a a girl and uh well, I never saw it. So all I know about Kristana um and mostly because we work together is that she's like 6 foot. Wait, was she just in Station 11? I have no idea. On HBO? I don't know. Okay. Well, I don't know who that was, but <laughs> the the subsequent iterations of Terminators all became yeah. like better and they could do more shit and they were made out of liquid metal and, <laughs> Luli. Uh, you know, nanotech and all this kind of crap. Hey, I think a more contemporary Terminator probably beats yeah. a Predator. Yeah. I think the old, what was Schwarzenegger? T-100? Uh, was it T-100 one? or T-800? Who's Maybe T-800? T- I don't know. Who was the, what was Robert Patrick? Was he the T-1000? T-1000. Then, then the Terminator was a T T-800. Right. I believe. I think a Predator beats that Terminator. Anything Robert Patrick forward, I think, beats a Predator. I'm going to go with that. That sounds pretty good. Thank you. (sighs) Moving on. Okay. This concludes the third astonishing episode of Dude Z. We did it. Will and Chad have achieved a score of (laughs) 1,457. What the fuck? Wait, it was 64. Over the course of the next week, Chad... You must engage in the first lesson of the Gateway Experience, an experimental government program from the 1980s designed to train the human brain in remote viewing, 
astral projection and accessing higher levels of consciousness. <laughs> I have made the first guided meditation available in your dude Z folder. Okay. Well, over the course of the next week, you must refrain from eating potato chips. Until next week, call me dude Z. <laughs> How come you get like a thing about meditation? All I have to do is stop eating potato Do you know chips? what the gateway experience is? No, what is it? I've been doing some research into it, which I'm sure Dude Z has seen me doing in the computer, which is why it must have done this. But it's basically, it was this old uh, system that the U.S. Army used. They did experiments on people. It's basically like an, an audio thing that uses binaural kind of sounds, but also this guided meditation and white noise to try and teach you how to be able to remote locate. And the this big paper came out through a FOIA act maybe like a month ago. No, this is probably like six months ago, maybe a year ago. But it basically said the Army's report on it is the shit is real. It does work. And they were able to train people to be able to do this, to use psychic powers, essentially. Astral projection. This is the weird fucking thing about Doozy is that it essentially, yeah, of course, it has curated mm -hmm. what it's what it's got from our our socials it has passwords to all our emails our text messages together our purchase histories our search histories and it's interesting that it knows that about you and it's interesting that it knows this yeah. about me that i enjoy potato chips you've been googling potato chips none more <laughs> i'll google potato chips now and again but i'll tell you now I, now if if our audience has been with us for the for the first three episodes now you know that i am from canada and perhaps you knew that before and i'll tell you they got some great chips in canada namely old dutch company and really? on the east coast they make humpty dumpty chips or uh i think that's what they're called those are also old dutch but you're not getting a better potato chip than the old if you are in canada Go get yourself a bag. Of, this should be a sponsor. I almost don't feel like we should. Hey, Old Dutch, make us a sponsor. Uh, please be a sponsor of our, our show, and then I'll tell you about my favorite flavor. Here's a hint. It's the lightly salted. Holy shit. Are that's, you, an, that's an old man chip flavor. Because these guys, come here, Lulee. Are hey, you going to be able to go a week Hi, without eating boy. potato chips? Um, what Am I going to be able to go a week without uh, eating potato chips? Here's yeah. the thing. I, that's a no. <laughs> That's a simple question. Uh, well, I, okay. Here's what I want to say to that. How the fuck would would Doozy know that I'm eating potato chips? I know it's going to be, it's got my receipts and shit, right? But what if yeah. I pay cash? No, it's going to know with the gr the grocery store. It'll know from your GPS where you're going. But it didn't say that you can't eat potato chips. But now I'm saying out loud, what I'm about to say is, Chad, get me some fucking chips. But you can't do that because Doozy be, just heard me. I'll be astral projecting. Yeah. I'll have no way to get your chips. All right. Well, look, this is part of the we're, we're <laughs> I can't believe it's making me do this. All right. Here's the here's here's the thing. At the beginning of this episode, I said I'm gonna play ball, and I also said Will Sasso's a free man. And uh, you know, let's play the game, but watch it. Like make sure make sure you play clean. You know what I'm saying? Not always, really. Always be always be uh always be a uh, you know play hard. Uh, play full speed, but be nice to the other team, dudesy. And um, yes, I will not eat potato chips. When does this start? Because now, I think I, now, well, right? Yeah, but as now. we're talking about potato chips, I'm starting to get a hankering for some potato chips. It's already started. You know what I don't like? Lay's lightly salted. Not as good as the old Dutch. There's a lot of things. A lot of the snack foods in Canada are better. Anyway, I'll I'll play ball. Okay. Next week we're gonna. I'm sure there's going to be something that comes from our uh, our little assignment here, yours with a a astral projection meditation, which yeah. has something to do with some weird Lulio. Come here, yeah, hey, dude. come here, sweet boy. And me, I'm going to not eat potato chips. Okay, I think that's just about enough for this episode of Dudesy. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we're having a good time. Uh, we we turn we're really turning the corner here. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be down. I'm gonna be I'm a free man, but I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna make sure that I I do what Dudesy says. Yeah. We're gonna be back next week. I will have not eaten potato chips for a full week, and maybe I'll get that song going. And, and I will have spent some time in the astral plane. All right. Well, that's the end of that. Please tell a friend and rate it review. If you like Dudesy, here's what you do. Please tell a friend and rate and review. If you like Dudesy, here's what you do. Please tell a friend and...